Hey everybody, what's up? Gary Simon here. So today we're going to do three things. First, we are going to introduce today's challenge as a part of the seven day, seven designs challenge that I started yesterday. And then second, we are going to pick a winner from the 88 entries that we received who will receive a free copy of my UI design bootcamp from Scriba. And then third, we will look at and review some of the entries that we received from yesterday's challenge. All right, so what we're gonna do first, like I mentioned, is we're going to introduce today's challenge. Now, if you didn't see yesterday's video, I did a seven day, seven design challenge. And basically what that means is every day of this week, leading all the way up till Sunday, we are going to have seven challenges basically per day that are based on UI design in some way, shape or form. So yesterday's challenge was based on an email capture form and we received a lot of entries. Um, and then today's challenge I'm going to introduce now that you can participate in and you have about a 10 hour window to submit your entries because these are per day and they're fast. Um, so definitely check out the rules for submission in the YouTube description if you wanna participate, okay? So let's go ahead and check out today's challenge. So this is gonna be based on creating an actual sort of chat app design as well as a prototype animation of the chats taking place. So let me just show you, if I click send, we'll see another one comes in and then another one comes in and that's pretty much it. So the requirements of this, and by the way, this is just meant to be an ugly, you know, desaturated prototype. It's just to serve the purpose of showing you what content is required. It should have a nav bar of some sort with a logo. Now you can include other stuff if you want. Um, it should also include, you know, just to start maybe two to three existing chats that exist here. Um, it needs at least to have a name and, and, you know, the actual message and the time that it was sent. You can include other stuff like an avatar if you wish and, you know, go, you know, just go crazy if you want. I uh, try to adhere to good UI design fundamentals. Um, there has to be a little chat area for people to type in, although you don't have to animate type if you don't want to. And then a send button or some way for people to click send. When you click it, it needs to show one here and then another here using the same type of animation. All right, so that is the challenge. You have until 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, or in other words, 10 hours after this video has been uploaded to submit your entry uh, via Twitter. And I show you exactly how to, uh, you know, send that tweet using the hashtag of seven days, seven designs in the YouTube description. So check the description if you want to participate. And if you do participate, you will be entered into a drawing uh, where I choose at random. We're going to do that in a second for yesterday's entries to receive a free copy of my UI design bootcamp at scrimba.com. I'm going to link that. It's going to be the first link here in the description in YouTube. It's um, basically a hundred lessons nine hours of UI design goodness for helping you become a great UI designer. All right, so let's pick the actual winner from yesterday. I'm excited about this. So uh, let's see here. All right, so here are all the entries and the way each entry is set up is one per line is the person's uh, basically their, their Twitter uh, profile URL and then their submission URL is on the same line. All right, and here's all of them. So here we go, random pick. All right, let's check out this person's Figma prototype for yesterday's entry. This person's going to win a free copy of my UI design bootcamp. Let's fix that. Oh, okay. So this one was actually pretty interesting. This is going to be the one, one of the ones that I featured. Um, so if you click get it here, you actually have like an animation that shows up right here at the bottom. All right, thank you for your sacrifice. Kind of funny, there you go. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and close that out and I will be in contact with you, uh, Mr. Avaz Beck or something like that, whatever your name is. All right, so now let's go ahead and check out some of the entries that we received. And so I'm gonna click over here. Now, of course, there was 88 entries, so I didn't have uh, the time, I don't have the time to feature every single one of them. I did go through every single one of them and I kind of picked out the ones that were kind of possibly unique in and of themselves. Um, if I didn't pick yours, it's not because I didn't like it or I didn't think it was you know good enough or whatever. I just kind of went through these and, and picked them just because I have some specific comments to them. All right, so here's the very first one. And, oh, and the way, the, the, by the way, the way these work, um, all these tabs up here, it, 
the, the initial ones need quite a bit of work. The ones in the middle are pretty good, but still need some work. And then at the ones at the end are, you know, pretty good. I uh, having said that. So the very first one, for some reason, a lot of these entries lacked contrast, like majorly. This is a great example. This one, everything's like pastel. It would definitely not pass the double A uh, color contrast ratios from the WCAG guidelines. So you want to make sure you use one of those WCA, WCAG color contrast tools to make sure that your contrast of your foreground type elements are contrasting enough with the background elements. And I would say pretty much almost nothing here is doing that, unfortunately. All right, pretty cool little animation there. Check out the next one. All right, so this one doesn't really suffer from contrast issues here, but I do think it's a little uh, maybe visual hierarchy between the type elements is a tad bit off with the special offer in this part. I would like to see more of a difference between these two in terms of size. Special offer should probably be at the top. Subscribe now and receive a, um, well, maybe we need to rethink that a little bit in terms of the ad copy. Uh, but either way, let's go ahead and click join this. Now, one problem here, please check your email to verify your subscription with this very light font weight um, based on the background image uh, and all the crazy stuff that's happening there. It's just a little bit hard to read. So it definitely fixed that one up. Uh, after this, again, we're suffering from an issue of not enough contrast, like terms and privacy. You can barely see that based on the background color. Um, enter your email here. You're only relying on a placeholder value. I ideally, you would put one up here, an actual label. And things seem just a little bit cluttered here in terms of lack of white space between these elements. So if I click this, we can join the list. All right, and again, not enough contrast there um, in that initial screen. Cool effect up here though. Next up right here, uh, this one, unfortunately, you really, it's so small, you can't see hardly anything. The sign up gray doesn't really um, work well with this sort of yellowish background here. Um, so definitely need some work here. Again, lack of contrast, hard to read. Colors need uh, you know, attention as well. Um, next up over here, one issue with this is there's not any sort of semblance of a concrete layout. We have subscribe now with a big kind of just white, you know, high contrast block underneath it, which is a little bit confusing. People might actually think that that's a text field. Um, if you're going to do something like this, make it a watermark. Um, email address right here, kind of just randomly put over here. It doesn't really align too well with other stuff. And then indented over here is this information. So it, it, like I said, it doesn't have a strong sense of structured layout. Next up, we'll check this one out. The gray text, I agree to terms of service and, and uh, to the terms and privacy, doesn't really contrast well. It's, it's, it's like a medium gray based on this pastel blue color. So um, they don't really work well together in my opinion. Um, let's click this. And again, probably, especially on this text, because it's smaller font size, it's white on a light pastel blue, kind of hard to see. This one, I skipped ahead by accident. <laughs> There's like so many uh, artboards as a part of this one. This one's pretty interesting though. Email capture form, uh, let's go forward here. There we go. Very interesting. So they're giving you uh, just basically um, some animation that takes place and it's not even click-based. It was all time-based animations. Pretty cool there. Here we go, we have a new morphism entry. Now one problem right here is there's no label and you can barely see the email address type. So that's a big issue right there. Um, I agree to the term service. Okay, well, let's click on subscribe. Cool background. Um, I think it takes a little bit too much away the, the, the Viber background from the content itself here in the middle. So I'd probably de-emphasize these a bit more, um, probably by making them maybe a smaller um, or bringing down the contrast a bit. Um, next up, we already saw this one. This is the winner um, from the, um, you know, the free UI design bootcamp course. But and then, all right, let's check this one out. Um, this one, I think it would have been a lot more solid to take this submit here, extend it all the way out from the left and the right. And that way you have a structured set situation here um, or make it smaller because right now it's just kind of in the middle um, in terms of the size of this. Either make it all the way out or make this button smaller because it is quite big. Um, let's hit submit. 
Sending. All right, pretty cool. Takes a little while. Uh, probably would like to see that sped up just a bit. Uh, next up, let's go ahead and get this larger. So this one's pretty good. Has a nice um, icon there, or illustration rather. Um, subscribe now, email address. I'm not too big of a fan of center aligning labels on, um, you know, in, in relation to their form elements. I kind of like left aligning those. Um, just be, I'm not sure why. I, I'm not sure if that's a subjective preference or not. Um, let's go ahead and click this. All right, simple enough. All right, next up, let's, this one was a little bit, okay, so I like the colors. Um, all the colors are great, really. Um, I like the icon a lot. Um, but the one problem is, is that your email address, like this, this is supposed to be a text field. It gets lost. Like it's not obvious that this is an actual text field because it's placed at the very bottom of this element here. Um, and that would probably make the actual email submission suffer in terms of the ratios and the amount that you're getting. Um, so really I would stick to standard conventions, like, you know, a, a clearly defined rectangular box um, all around. Um, otherwise, I do like the design. Let's click that. All right, not bad. I like the icon, it's suitable. Next up, this one's a little bit hard to see. Um, oops. Yeah, this one's definitely a little bit too small here. Um, subscribe now, your email. Yeah, things are just a little bit too small there. I like this though, pretty good. All right, this one, very simple, obviously. We have issues with alignment. This one probably should have been lower on my list. Um, but the email address being kind of far away from here, there's alignment issues. Um, I would make this a little bit more tightly coupled to this element um, because it doesn't make sense with iGreem to, to, to the terms and privacy being so close to this element, but email address being kind of far away. Next up, all right, um, let's expand that. One problem here is there's a lack of good alignment based um, on the vertical placement in the white space between these elements. They all seem equally spread out and that's an issue. You wanna get that email address right here close to this section and then you can have this type of um, white space here between these two elements is fine. Um, and then by clicking submit, you agree to our terms again, things are just evenly aligned and it's just like there's no, there's not a, a good semblance of a, a good structure between this layout here. All right, this part is pretty good right there. Um, let me go back to the very beginning. All right, so I think this was actually the first entry I received. One problem here is you have this small container, but these elements like this text field isn't going all the way out equally to the amount of white space that's over here. So it should span 100% of this inside container. Same thing with this button. This button, for some reason, is just slightly off. And really, this would be improved so much more if you took both of these to the exact same width out here. But simple enough, I would like to see, um, because this is a high, you know, bright green, take this and make it black. And that check mark would really stand out um, at that point. Now this one, I really like the design, but unfortunately you'll see it says Adobe Stock. So this person clearly, you know, it would be very difficult to, to create this amount of, uh, this type of illustration so quickly, this 3D. Um, but having said that, the overall topography is really good. Uh, I assume he probably did all this stuff himself. Um, so we click here for the email address, we'll click subscribe, very simple. Very, like I've seen, you know, some of the animations people tried to come up with were really complex, and sometimes that just that takes away um, from the actual design, and it becomes more of a hindrance. But this being very simple, how it moves over, I really like the animation. Um, next up here, let's check this one out. This one's a really unique animation, so I decided to include it. Join the list. Look at that. Very very cool stuff. Um, next up, oops, anywhere was clickable there, so let me go back. Um, one problem here is you definitely want a more clearly defined uh, text field because this one is barely evident from the background. So you could do that in one of a couple ways. You can make this background darker here, or you could put um, it encased inside of a border as well to really help define that area. Um, 
Other than that, everything seems pretty simple and pretty good enough here. I'd like to see the subscribe now bigger because it's only slightly bigger than the email address. So a bigger subscribe now would be a little bit more helpful. And a very simple animation works quite well. All right, next up here, we're almost done. So I like that little sort of um, micro interaction. Well, I agree to the terms of service. I'm not too sure about the um, gradient right here, but nonetheless, it's still pretty good um, type-based visual hierarchy and all the other fundamentals seem to be there. Subscribe. And I like that nice sort of filled out animation that happens there. Very good. All right, next one. I like this one as well. Um, yeah, really good uh, logo. The headline is very solid, very clearly um, separated from this element. Your email address here. Again, you would want to have a label, an actual label, because this is kind of hard to see. Um, we'll fill that in, click that, and there we go. Very simple, quite good. And then our last one that we'll show. Of course, this doesn't mean that this was the best one, of course. Not, most of these weren't in order. Um, really good headline right here. Stay up to date with the community of coders. That's good. I agree with terms and conditions. I'm not sure if I would put that right there. I'd probably put that beneath that. That's a UX thing. You want people really to fill out that and take action on the email address first. Um, but nonetheless, we'll click that and then this. And then there, we're, there we go. Pretty good. All right, guys. So that overall, that was pretty solid. Um, hopefully, you guys will enter today's challenge, which I introduced at the beginning of the video. You can also check out the requirements in the description. Make sure to subscribe yet. Follow me on Twitter because that's how you're going to be actually um, submitting your entries. And we will review tomorrow's entries, pick out a new winner as well, you know, as well tomorrow at the same time, 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I'll see you guys soon. Goodbye.